Hats off to, to Coach Odom and his staff in UMBC. They, they played a terrific game. They thoroughly outplayed us. And um, they did a heck of a job. Very hard to guard offensively. And they defended us well. I was concerned with a four guard or a four perimeter offense heading into this. Um, and we didn't do the job. And I told these guys in the locker room, you know, a week ago, we were cutting down the nets at the ACC tournament and how good that felt. Um, and they had a historic season. They really did. Uh, I said that to Tracy on um, the CBS after the game in terms of ACC wins and um, an ACC conference tournament championship. And then we had a historic loss, being the first one seed to lose. So um, that's life. We talk about it all the time uh, with the adulation, the praise. It comes, and we've got a lot of that this year. And then on the other side, there'll be blame and, and people pointing that out. But that can't, uh, in the end, you know, define these guys and our team or us, because it was a remarkable season. But, but we got thoroughly outplayed, and that's the reality of it. And um, I hate for this team, the way they played, to, to lose like this. But for Devin and Isaiah to go out like that, and Nigel being a, a fifth year for us. So um, with that. Um, if you play this game and you step into the arena, this stuff can happen. And those who haven't been in the arena or in the competition, maybe they don't understand that. But there's chances for wonderful things to happen. But when you're in the arena, stuff like this can happen. And all those who compete take that on. And, and so we'll accept it. And again, I want to congratulate the job that Ryan and his staff did. It, they, they played well, and, and we did not. Questions for? Um Kyle and Ty, raise your hand. First question to our right. Uh, for both of you guys, what was UMBC doing so effectively, really at both ends of the floor, and then especially at the start of the second half? Ty. Um, they spread the floor. They made shots. We didn't. I don't think we defended well. Um, we didn't pass the ball well. We didn't, you know, bring. We didn't come off screens well. We didn't. We didn't do anything well tonight, to be honest. Um, and give credit to them too because they play well. They're a good team, but we didn't we didn't do anything well. Yeah, that defen mm. Defensively, they uh, they were very quick, and you know we're beating screens and shortcutting and stuff. So it was just hard to get in a rhythm. And then once we got down eight or ten, we were trying to make home run plays because you know you don't you don't want to be in this position and so. Other questions for Kyle or Ty? To our left. Roger Rubin from the Fieldhouse for Ty. You know, you've listed a bunch of things that sort of were happening about why you guys didn't, about how you guys didn't play that well. Do you have any idea why it happens that way? Um, you know, it's basketball. Um, you're not going to be, I mean, I, I don't know why. I don't know why. No, I guess we didn't. Maybe we didn't come ready to play today. Um, we didn't shoot well. That that definitely doesn't help. But to only have five total assists as a team is pretty bad. So I guess we didn't move the ball well. We didn't shoot well. We probably should have thrown into the post more. I don't have the answers. Andy, to our right. For both you guys, obviously, it's a tough spot to come in here and, and answer questions. I'm curious, what have you learned from Coach Bennett that prepares you for this part of basketball? Kyle. Um, you know, I love Coach Bennett, but there's not really a whole lot that can prepare you for this kind of feeling. Um, uh, he, uh, you know, has instilled a lot of uh, humility and unity throughout our team, so, you know, It'll be easy, easy for us to bounce back, but you know, there's not really uh, an answer to, to make you feel better in this uh, situation. Um, back to the room. Brendan, Brendan Marks, the Baltimore Sun. This question is for either one of you. Um, what did you guys talk about at halftime being tied 21-21? What did you think you needed to do in, in the second half to sort of swing things back in your favor? Ty. Um, it's tough to remember, but I think we just said uh, uh, every possession was going to matter. Um, I think it was 21-21. I 
and they had a three off an offensive rebound and a three when we didn't scramble correctly and make a right rotation. So that's six of their 21 points. So we said every possession is going to matter. Um, we were going to be in for a battle, and uh, we had to buckle down, um, especially defensively and um, offensively, just you know, be more aggressive, want to spread the floor a little more. And uh, we, didn't, we didn't do either one of those things. To our right. Kyle, uh, Lyles had taken only two shots in the first half, I believe, scored five points, and then gets 23 after intermission. What did they do differently, and what made it so difficult to check him after halftime? Um, he was a you know tough player to guard. He was very shifty and could hit tough shots. And um, in the first half, honestly, he just wasn't really being all that aggressive. Uh, and you know, Devin was playing uh, pretty good defense, and um, but other guys were hitting shots, so he didn't really need to do much. And then second half, he got it going, and you know, Coach Williford said when you let a team hang around for a while, they get a lot of confidence, and you know, he definitely had that. Second row, Howdy from the run of times. Ty, uh, were you aware that a, a 16 had never won before, and did you just kind of dismiss that ahead of time? Um, I think everyone's aware of that. Uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that up again. But uh, yeah, I was aware of it. Any other questions? Last question for the student athletes. What kind of life lesson does this teach both of you? Go ahead. Um, I mean, if you're worried about you know the outside world, Coach Bennett and the staff told us early in the year that um, you know it's a flip of a coin it's that the same people that will tell you how great you are and praise you um, you know when you're on top you feel like you're on top of the world well are the same people that are going to kill you you know when you're when you're at this point um, but to be honest I don't think we this team's never been worried about you know you guys the media the outside world but it just shows you that really anybody could be anybody and if you don't come to play you're going to get beat I mean, it's basketball I, uh, you know, it's you know it's all a blur right now. It's really hard to <laughs> to answer these questions, as you guys know. And um, one thing this this team was really good at and built on was resiliency. And I think bouncing back from something that's so heartbreaking um, will be will be a huge key for us. I just you know just feel so bad for Isaiah and Devin and, and Nigel because this is not how we wanted to send them out. Okay, guys, thank you. You can head back to the locker room. We appreciate you being here, and congratulations on a great year. Okay, questions for Coach Bennett. First question, the back of the room to our right. Coach, I, I know it's got to be difficult for you to, to tell these guys really anything to sort of comfort them now, but you know, in the locker room post game, what, what do you try and tell them? Yeah, there's not a whole lot you can say uh, right now. Um, we talked about a few things, but, um, you know, heads are down. And again, that's the reality of it. And you can say all the, the, the soothing things or whatever. And I, time, time will heal. And I did share with them, I said, uh, what I started my opening statement with, that's, that's life. Um, this is not the end of the world. Okay, this is not a, there's a lot of worse things that can happen. It's the first time it happened, but this is a possibility. And we knew that. Um, again, I, we, we had a, a remarkable year, and, but we also knew our margin for error wasn't huge, and they just played. They were so good. And I was so sad that now we're done with this group because they did everything I asked. And when we weren't quite right, we couldn't keep them out of the paint. You asked that question, whoever did, about Lyles coming off the ball screen. 33 or 13 are both foremen who can really shoot. And so I think at times we were worried about, we got to get back to the shooter, and then we didn't stop the ball, and they had us in no man's land, and uh, they put pressure on us in ways they did. But, um, but back to the, the deal, there, there's not much you can say. Um, I think they're strong character guys, and... and have to bounce back. Like he said, resiliency has been their strength. And now it'll get tested in a way that I don't think they thought it would have to be tested. Second row. 
you mentioned earlier in the week that you'd seen Lyles at your camp, uh, son of uh, UVA alumni. What, yes, mom, yeah. what did you remember? I, not much. I mean, he, he's really quick. He's really good. I, he went to VCU, obviously, and had a terrific – I think he came back for his fifth year. I wish he wouldn't have done that now. <laughs> so, um, But really good. What a heck of a senior year or, or fifth year and um, dangerous. You saw the shot he hit to get them into the NCAA tournament. And again, the way they play with the four guards and the spread and uh, the quickness. And that's uh, – their point guard did a heck of a job. Uh, KJ was – I mean, he was so quick and he managed the game. And they really defend it. So uh, that quickness with a four separate ball screen has always been an issue uh, if you can't switch it. And, and they put us in a tough spot, and we didn't do a great job with it. All the way in the back of the room. How you doing, Coach? Uh, Lawrence, Seven City Shop Talk Sports. Uh, you alluded to, the, alluded to it earlier about uh, them being uniquely gifted with the four guards uh, system. Yeah. Uh, is there a, another team that you've seen in the last two years that uh, kind of reminds you of them? Because I, I mean, they're very, you know, very yeah. different from what I've seen. Yeah, another, uh, we, we've at times had a little trouble with four perimeter teams, four guard teams. And, um, and this is not an excuse, but, you know, without DeAndre, I thought we had enough with what we had, but that allowed us to sometimes switch and he could, you know, his versatility helped us. When we didn't have that, we always were a little nervous. Um, and so I think, Again, their quickness, their size is small, and we, we couldn't, a couple times we got it inside, we couldn't take enough advantage of that. They did a great job blocking out. But um, again, they put a lot of pressure on you with that. And they run their offense. That's why I wanted to give credit to Ryan. They run their offense so fast. That ball just pop, pop, pop. And they got dribble handoffs. They're keeping it, and they're moving. And if you're not really disciplined and really sound, and we worked as hard as we could preparing for it, um, but it's like you can't mimic that until you go against it. And they, they got us a little behind, and then we lost our way. We, we like, I think it was a good point. We probably tried to get it back in one shot and got out of character. And uh, I'm sure I'll look at the tape, and, and uh, I probably made a lot of poor adjustments. Uh, and that's, that's part of it. And I'll, I'll grow from it as a coach. Um, but our young men tried. They, they battled. It wasn't a lack of effort. But it was a hard team for us once they got ahead of us. Reminder, Virginia locker room open for another four minutes. Any other questions for Coach Bennett? To our left. C.L. Brown with the Fieldhouse. Tony, uh, in the steps you've taken to build this program, how, how will you view this season, given that, as you said, you guys achieved a lot getting yeah. number one, winning ACC regular season, but to have it in this way? Yeah, that's a good question, and I don't know. Um, <laughs> remarkable 31 wins. I think this team maxed out as much as any team that I've had. And we were so healthy and so good up until this last game. So we needed all hands on deck. Um, you'll remember this. It'll sting. Maybe a one seed will get beat again. Maybe not. Maybe we'll be the only one seed to ever lose. It's life. It goes on. So I, we'll have to get past that for some reason. Um, this is what we've got to deal with. And my job now will be to say, hey, how do we bounce back with our, our players and all that? But, but a life lesson is sitting there about defining yourself by maybe not what the world says, but there's other things that matter. And then you get back to it. Um, phenomenal year. Can't take away an ACC championship. Can't take away the most wins. Can't take away an ACC conference tournament. And you can't take away so far being the first one seed to get beat and lose. I grew up, played at Wisconsin Green Bay, the hyphenated schools. I know how good they are. I said it yesterday or the day before the press conference. Good basketball knows no divisions or limits or qualities. And, and they played. All that matters is who plays the best. They earned their right to play in this tournament. We earned our right. They earned their right to move on. And it's who played the best for those 40 minutes. And they absolutely did. So um, I won't take away from some of the things, but it certainly stings. And, um, you know, I don't know. I'll have to th ask me that maybe next year or another time, and we'll see.